look what we had up here. That actually turned out quite nice. I couldn't see in the dark at all how it looked. Yeah, look at that. It's like concrete already. It probably froze. That's fine. A couple passes with that old girl and, uh, and yeah. Good enough for now. I've got a laser on order. Big uh, rotary laser level. So once that's here, I'll be able to go around and make this perfect. Two but hours later. My laser came in. So this is a Johnson. It's pretty cool. It's very professional. It's nicely set up. So it's a Johnson 40-6515. Um, class 3 laser. Nice and strong. Came with this receiver down here. So it seems to work fine. It beeps. And it just so happens that a friend of mine lent me his Hilti. Because my Johnson was supposed to be here next week. So I compared the two. It's a Hilti PR15 class 2 laser. That's a class 3. I don't know the difference, but the power is the same. It's the same wattage. Usability, they're exactly the same. You turn them on, they self-level, and you uh, walk around with a great stick. Honestly, I don't know what the, what the Hilti system cost. Amazon had this thing on sale for over half off. Normal price on that thing is like $1,300 Canadian. I just paid 500 bucks for it. And considering it's exactly the same functionality as that Hilti that I was borrowing, 10 out of 10 for Johnson. You know what? A few things I like better about the Johnson, actually. The laser guard. So if it falls over, um, in comparison to that, this guy just sits on top and rotates. You bump this over with the machine. I'm so stupid and klutzy that I'm guaranteed to hurt one of these. Um, it's going to be mine. I'm not going to have this one out with my machines because I'll give it back, but... If I bump that over, I'm a little less concerned about it getting uh, getting broken. It's got nice heavy-duty rubber coating on it. Like, it's it's built well. It's built for idiots like me. Another thing I like better about this, mind you, that's just whatever kit you buy. It came with a 13-foot grade stick. It's huge. It goes to the very top of my poles if I reach up, so that's awesome. The Hilti's got a bigger stand, but again, that's just options. Uh, for what I'm doing, zero complaints with this, with this Johnson. 10 out of 10. Would recommend it. It's so easy. I took it out of the box, I put it together, and within two minutes I was walking around my plot here and I um, know where I am high and where I'm low. I'm within this everywhere, so I'm pretty impressed. It's kind of cool. Johnson vs. Hilti, save, save the money. Definitely. Definitely. Get a Johnson. It's cool. thing comes with an adjustable wall mount bracket so that there there's a screw on the front that you can play with and it'll actually move in and out if you choose to use the wall mount i got that over at the side by side look at the state of this grade rod it's freaking huge i love it like i said i can come up and i can actually reach the top of my poles with ease so i'm actually going to be able to use this setup to set my post heights i just got to figure out how to get up top hold the grade rod on the on the post by myself all that sort of stuff but I have high hopes. The stand build quality is almost identical to the Hilti, other than maybe a couple of paint quality differences. Um, everything's made out of real metal. Nice aluminum. Nice aluminum bars. Everything's like super sturdy. It's got rubber tips that come off so you can stab it into the ground if you want. I had no reason to take them off, but if you're working in mud or whatever, you can stab it in and it won't move. Yeah, I like it. You won't be able to see it, but the laser came with this little doodad here and it uh, it's a little bit of a pain to use. You gotta hold it on a weird angle, but um, once you do, you can actually see the laser from this distance on the post. So I think what I'm gonna do first is go along all my posts and center this or whatever and then put a couple screws oh that's nice um but <laughs> i didn't know there was a magnet on that and then and then yeah put a couple screws in perfectly level maybe so that i can uh, come in and set my grade rod on it i think it's going to be my best way of getting a accurate height up top so you can watch me fumble through it in quick mode because it's cold out and the camera doesn't last all that long if i keep you on normal record so
Well, I genuinely can't think of a better way <laughs> to do what I just did. That was perfect and easy. I got screws in all the way along, all at the exact same height. I didn't even come over and bump the laser till the very end, and I might have moved it just a just a hair, but that's fine. I got my I got my heights set before I did that. So um, now I just need to measure from those points up, and I don't know, crawl up a big ladder, figure out how to get up there, I guess, and spray paint a spot, and then go back up and <laughs> mark it with the chainsaw. Yeah. What my plan is, is to set my grade rod on top of the screws because the screws are all at the exact same height. And then I'm going to crawl up top with my ladder and paint. And it looks like I'm going to be able to mark them about 12, 12, 4, 12, 3. I can't quite see from here, but that'll be the height that I cut them up top from this point. So there's about five feet, five and a half feet from the ground to these and then another 12 and a bit is gonna be really close to my, it's almost 17 feet pretty much. And then there's gonna be a whole bunch of timbers that go on top to bring up the extra height. So anyways, I think this is gonna work perfectly. I just need a better ratchet strip. That's my shortest pole, so I'm just gonna cut that one as long as I can, or mark it as long as I can. I guess the best way to do this is to mark them all and then go up later with the chainsaw. I love ladders. Favorite part of the whole job. I hate ladders. The post feels fine, but... 12-4, I guess, is the number. This is a really important part, and I don't know how to do it without screwing up. I don't know if that's accurate enough. I've got a system, but... I guess it's okay. I need a lift. I need a zoom boom. I don't have one. I don't want to rent one. They cost money. Well, regardless, I got this one marked. No way in hell I'm running the chainsaw on a ladder like this, though. Yeah, it did, the, it did the job. Obviously, I'm working with myself here. It doesn't matter that it ran down. I can still see a line up there, so. Yeah, as uh, scary as that is, I think that's my only option here. The forklift sprung a leak. I even thought about using that as a man basket. At least that way I could crawl up and move around. Um, forklift's got that leak. The forklift's got that hydraulic leak. I don't know if I've showed it in a video yet or not. So one of the hoses that supports the, the beam when it's up, the boom when it's up, um, it's really old and chafed and ugly. I don't want to be in the bucket or in the basket with with the uh, with the thing like that. So I'll have to replace that hose, but I could stack another cage on this and get the extra height. I think that's what I'm going to be doing for putting the beams up there, actually. I don't know, but it, it sprung an oil leak on the on the head. I should start it up here and actually see if it's doing it. Because it's, um, yeah, you can see it right here. If it leaks really, if it leaks really bad, I can't use it. It does run so well though. Oh no! It's fine, it, it survived, no damage. Make this run again. Well, it was leaking oil out of the head gasket. It doesn't appear to be now. I guess we're gonna leave it and try it out. One thing's for sure. If I'm in that cage, I'll be able to reach that very easily. We're going for 12 4 oh yeah. I just gotta practice getting up there. For safety's sake, I think I'm gonna strap the cage to the forks, but this is the thing I'll, I, I'm worried about. So it's, it's dry. And because this is here, I think it might 
might have been something rubbing on it, and if it was something rubbing on it, it might not be integrally pooched, but I don't know. I'll be in it. Maybe we'll try it. I picked up the lift of lumber the other day with it, and that weighs like 5,500 pounds, and that line didn't blow, so. It's also been running long enough to uh, actually overheat, maybe? <laughs> um. Oh, that's, um, that's very cold. It tells me that thermostat's not opening. Makes me wonder if there's not... A no coolant problem. Okay, let's fix that. Oh, I came back over here and... That's hot. That's not, no, I think it's just really low on coolant. At least that opened up, okay. Still low on coolant though. Okay, I think that'll work fine once I get everything lined up. I'm just gonna bring this down and hook up the uh, ratchet strap to the underside of it here. So I'd rather, I'd rather be extra safe, you know? As unsafe as this actually is. I want to be clear, nothing about this is, is safe. Don't do it at home. I'm only doing it because I'm a big dumb. I'm a big dumb and I'm working alone. And in my mind, I don't have a choice because I can either pay someone, which is out of the question, or rent something, which is... Oh, which is just as close to out of the question. If I could buy something, I'd be all over it. Oh, what banana wrap this cable is. Anyone else hate it when their straps are wrong? You gotta go through. You go through and then out the top. In this case, it's upside down, but that way when you pull on it, it gets right out of your way. Well, that moves a lot more than I thought it would after tying it to it. Wow. Okay, we're gonna rethink that. wiggles way way less than it did with the strap underneath. Don't mind that at all. That's, it feels like it's one piece with the forklift. One thing I know for sure with this forklift is it doesn't sag at all, it'll just stay put. The park brake's broken too, so I can't put that on. Um, I put my paint in there, right? It's nice to hang on to, you know. It either works or it doesn't. It works. I tell you what, I'd be a hell of a lot more comfortable in here with a chainsaw than on the ladder. I just really don't like heights, I think, is the problem. I'm 
a lot more comfortable in here though than I was on that ladder. Now I've got to rig up controls from up here or I got to rig up another person. Anyways, let's try to get back out of here. Yeah, I got a nice distinct ring around it. Cool. Okay, I got 11 of those to do. I've got two done. And then I got 11, or 13, whatever, how many I got. I got lots to do. I'm just gonna keep doing them without the camera. I was working so well, and then my can of spray paint is either frozen or gelled up by the way. I had more paint. Um, my batteries keep dying. It's so cold out, so I'll update you when I'm done. Come with me, and you'll see a world of OSHA violations. This is safe, right? Welcome to the top of the world. Fully charged GoPro battery and you die. Um, anyways, I got this perfectly flat, perfectly level. I don't know how long that video went, so... Um, yeah, like I said, I'm having so, so many GoPro issues today. I'm just gonna cut all these and we'll record what it allows me to, but this one came out perfect, so hopefully the rest do. <coughs> I got them all cut to height. I'm happy. I don't think my camera. Built this fire pit the other day in like 15 minutes. It's perfect size. It's huge. I can get anything I want in it. All right, here's the next day. I got up there already and cut the ends off of that and got it screwed down. I got, uh, well, I got three screws in that side too and this side I screwed up on that side by accident but that's fine extra strength is good so see if I can get the rest on I'm using the bobcat to put the beams on my forklift cages and then putting it in place with the forklift crawling up on top crawling in the cage like I was before and uh, dealing with them so that was the first one it was easy being able to just put it in place and it stayed um, I'm gonna have to be very accurate with the forklift getting this one up there this end is already good, so I'm gonna line it up with this side and hopefully that it just works. I don't know. I don't have good luck, so we'll see what happens.
That's perfect. I'm gonna see if I can get some screws in this way as well, like like toenail them in like this to suck them together. I think I'll be able to do that. So. I can also actually maneuver it up top pretty easy. It's not that bad. Cool, first try. Check this out. Up until now, I've been able to wiggle it just a little bit. Nothing concerning by any means, just... All I did was set that on top. I didn't screw it in yet, and that's so secure. This post isn't even screwed down. And it's like a rock. Way less this way too, that's awesome. So the screws I'm using are these things here. They're uh, proper industrial, outdoor rated, um, galvanized, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Uh, they're just over 10 inches long. They're going through the eight inches, which is ending about here. And then I'm sucking them in about three quarters of an inch to an inch. So there's plenty of penetration into my poles. And I don't know, just in case anyone was curious, I'll show you the box later if you want. Don't copy me. This is just what I'm doing with what I have. Even using this like a wall feels better. That's like perfect. That was my bit for putting these in. Hey, you want to pass that up to me? Please? Oh. All that work for that. One thing I'm really actively trying not to do is knock my ladder down. I can probably scale this if I have to. I just don't want to. These screws are insane. You think one toenail is enough? I can always come back later and do more. One's enough for me for now. my uh, my trash tote at the bottom there it's all lightweight stuff I didn't feel the need to empty it cardboard and stuff okay and we're in the tote okay so unfortunately because of the way this is designed I'm forced just to eyeball this, it is what it is. So, this pose can go back a little ways. Just trying to keep my beam straight on top. Um, there's a little bit of an end curve, but it's gonna curve in with this end wall anyways, so. As long as my wall's straight when I glue it together, right? I think that's pretty good there. So I'm gonna put I'm gonna put one screw into it, and then I'm gonna cut it off, and then I'm gonna brace it with another screw. Now I can't lift it off. Cool. It means the screw works. I'm a little bit more comfortable up here on the two totes. Because if that hydraulic line does fail, now it's only got about six feet to fall instead of like 12. That's All that would happen is I go straight down and it'll probably happen slowly. I hope. I really hope it just doesn't fail. Come on, you. 
dead center and it's straight up and down okay get rid of this because it's heavy doesn't need to be it and we'll put one more screw in this thing two's good enough for these I believe that'll do I just want to explain what happened there. Um, I got it up into place and the overhang of this side was like, it was like here that I'd be cutting off to make the corner. And this end of the log is much smaller. Didn't quite meet the eight inch in a, in a spot or two. So I'm going to spin it around and that end will touch this side. And then this end I'll have in a much better spot. Or you know what, I can just cut more of this side off. Maybe I'll just do that. Point is, I don't want to get rid of the good end. Maybe I'll just cut more of this off. It's, uh, it's better on top. See what I mean? If I cut, maybe I'll just cut to like here. Sure would be pissed off if I made it too short. I'd like to cut it like here, because I think that's where it was going to be. But I didn't measure when I was up there, I didn't even think. I'll just spin it around and stick with plan A. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, just for the record, doing this by yourself sucks. I forgot I had two 10-footers pre-cut. Now I've got three up there. So I'm kind of lost. I don't know. I screwed up. I used up one of my 8x8s eight when I should not have. That corner one that was really long should have gone there. And then one of those short ones should have gone there. Uh, Doing things by yourself, guys, is hard sometimes. Trying to keep track of everything all by yourself, all at once. Like, ah. Just a little progress update. I got this wall up. I'm crawling up there right now to drill it, or to screw it and cut it. Everything else is looking pretty good. It's as square as it can be. These posts aren't perfect. But 
I'm getting the gaps pretty close. Short of running the chainsaw in between them when I'm up there, it's kind of hard to do that down here. So I'm not upset with the gaps at all because everything's just going to get spray foamed eventually, I bet. But that corner's nice and strong and you know, the, the structure's the structure is nice and not wiggly at all anymore, so not from the bottom here anyways. You can see the difference. See how that post just wiggles around? This post might. Not really. This one, this one on and everything else just it's all tied together now. It's so solid. I can't wait to get those on top. Well YouTube, I got this far. And that's missing one because I'm dumb and I cut, well, any number of those three. They were all 12 feet long. I needed one for there. I didn't realize I had two 10 foot lengths cut. It's not a big deal for the long run because up here is going to be another 12 footer that I don't have at all. And then across the front is going to be a door. So I'm going to need more 10 footers. Um, so this one here is definitely not going to waste, but I need to get more tree. So I'm just eyeing down this big one right there. I don't necessarily want to take it down, but I kind of need to. Um, yeah, I don't know if I have another choice here, so I'm going to give my friend a call. He's got an acreage with, with a bunch of big trees that he said I could maybe have. So I'm going to need one, two... Oh, three, four. I'm going to need at least four more. Three, four. I've got, like, I've got five at the back wall. So in theory, I need five at the front wall, unless I do a really big span or something on on the one side. Maybe I'll do, like, a 16-foot span for a garage door. Um, I don't know. I haven't got that far yet. But I do need two, three, four. I do need five more trees to go in the ground. And that one, so the empty land behind me has a lot. They're just far, and I don't know if I have time to make a road to them because they're they're way up, way up there. So I don't know. For now, I'm halted, but I'm happy with my progress. Everything's going smoothly. The forklift is working amazingly for getting these beams up. I have a high high hopes and high expectations that I'm going to be able to put these trusses right up on top of the crate and then I'll just load it here. I'll just lift it way up and I'll just back up with the trusses right up on top. And when I get to here, I'll just gently put it down and same with the middle one and same with that one. So we'll see how that plays out. I'm not close to doing that yet. I'd like to maybe go up top and build little pads for the trusses to sit on because there's a couple of spots on the joinery where it's not absolutely perfect. And if I were to cut like a one by eight to go across it and screw it down, just maybe two feet long, just to overlap a foot on each side, I think that would make a much nicer landing for those to be on. Well, if anything, it's just gonna make it stronger, isn't it? So I will get back to you with when I do that. I think I'm going to, so I've got a few of these few of these two by eights that I can do that too. In hindsight, I probably could just take a two by four and stick it up there because what's the big deal about having a two by four on your joints? I'm not opposed to that. Cool. See you later. back today at Ray's. He's given me some logs. This is the next day actually from when I left off in this video series. So we're making good progress. Look at my luck. I'm just driving off the trailer. The ramp slip up and my, uh, my teeth hooked into it. Awesome.
my dick gets better. I only brought enough gas for like two tanks. It's fine though, I haven't filled this gas in like two months. It's done well. I'm gonna bring the truck and trailer down there later. I just want to saw with me so so that they're not doing all the work, you know. I hate this. If you haven't seen it, check out the video of installing this propane tank line. I didn't get to be here when the tank went in, but we've got excavating through the ground. It's frozen at the time. It was uh, it's actually quite the quite the hard work. It's it's on my channel if you want to check that out. Rule number one, get your equipment way out of the ray of the trees you're falling. Oh, you bugger! <laughs> Beautiful. Stacking trees. Like a pro.
I thought. We could do this, cut it up, make it smaller, or uh, Ray's gonna go grab his pickup. If this doesn't work. then it can't come off. Well, it's either gonna work or it won't. Oh, that's not a good sound on the truck. Man, that doesn't sound like it's gonna last more than a tree or two. Try four low, maybe it'll be a little nicer to it. At least you're moving it. I've seen that. Oh no. Oh no, we brought all the tree. I thought we left half the tree behind. Must be race for a stay driving. Okay, maybe it's just the road. Doing burnouts. And we're taking runs at things. It's trying to come around a corner into another tree and all these branches are on the ground acting as anchors. This is what we got from two trees so far. A couple of great big bases for milling and a couple of posts that I'll shave and coat like I did the other ones. So that's the base. 10, 11, like perfect. Same with that. My foot's like 13, so. And then these bad boys. inch at the small end so there's my eight by eights and and two by eights and all that sort of jazz hopefully I hooked the right tree round three I didn't hook the right one but I hooked one of them well maybe I hooked the right one I don't know it's so hard to tell they're all hold up Stupid chain. All right. You're good. Yikes. Eventually it's got to break all the branches and you just go, right? That's 
working. Most destructive way to do this, I guess. Sometimes the best way. Oh, he's pulling uphill too. I guess that helps. Go tree, go! That's funny. It's actually working. And we're out of here. Tree number four. First try, beauty. And then uh, the fifth one got stuck in the trees up here a little bit, so hopefully it's not too hard to get out. Man, the sun this time of year is just right in your face all the time. Um, yeah, this one's in between a few things. We're going to have to cut it here and pull it out that way. Yep, I'm going to have to come in here and yeah, hook onto it there. The first one we pulled out, it left all of its branches behind right here. It's just perfect. Not quite, keep coming. All right. That'll either work or it won't. I'm, I cut it off, so you should be able to just yank it out, yeah. Lots of clicking and grinding. Oh, you're on a rock. You, uh, you got a tie rod to change. Yeah, yeah, you're pigeon toed now. Well, don't move it, don't move it, you're done. That sucks. That sucks. You're pigeon toed, but it's not touching anything, so you can drive it out of here. My battery's about to die, but um, this was tree number five. Ray's working on three and four. 
I'll go help him and then now we just got to cut these up get them on my trailer and bring them home so we will see you at home I guess 1997 Cummins 12 valve Dodge and a big dually cold start it was uh, minus 10 overnight it was minus 10 overnight which is probably 20 degrees 15 20 degrees Fahrenheit for anyone in America watching that's how good this thing starts every time it's about six degrees Celsius now so if you want to do the conversion you can but it's still still pretty cold and just boom flashed running up and uh, no smoke up the exhaust not when it's uh, not when it's cold anyways Kind of gives a good idea how big the shop is so that, that's pulled all the way forward this trailer doesn't quite fit inside but that being said it's a 30 foot trailer it's a 20 foot drop pretty long right so these are my posts for the in the ground for the in the ground look at me go i got a lot that are way too long because i didn't feel like cutting six inches off the top and regretting it um so anyways these are proper height these are probably my two big ones i think Um, no, maybe not. Maybe that one on the end. But anyways, I've got to skin these and get them treated so they can live in the ground. That's my next step after unloading them. Um, I can back up a little by the looks of it. Anyways, I'm probably just going to put them here. Here's my one eight by 8 that I kind of screwed up on. Um, what do I want to do? Maybe I'll just move all these... Maybe I'll just move all these and then I can put my trees right on these little trees. Mind you, I did use the big trees before. What's on this side of me? Nothing.
doesn't even care about the camera, he just wants the pets. Cleo over there, she doesn't come around. Oh, here he does. Look at this way. Big things. Yeah, I got them all stacked here nicely. Um, see, the base ends are nice and big like the old ones. Good, uh, probably 10 inch on that one, 12 inch on that one. And same as these two. Yeah, they're awesome. They just look a little skinny because they're just way longer than they need to be. So once I cut them off, I don't know exactly where where the length is. Um, which one's the shortest? That one's probably the shortest. Yeah, that one's probably the shortest. So yeah, once I get them all, and even it, I made maybe a foot longer. So once I get them all cut off, they'll be awesome. Anyways, all I got to do now is skin them. I've got the same doodad I was using before. I got this guy, the Log Wizard. 10 points for this thing so far. I love it. 10 out of 10. Great little, uh, great little addition, especially on a tiny little saw. It's a 235 I've got it running on, so that's 35cc. Not a big engine, not a big saw. Um, I love it. It's, I find it to be near perfect for the saw. It's a good weight combination, good balance. I'm so happy. So it's going to take me a long time as normal to get these cleaned up. I'm not going to film it because it's just annoying and it's still cold out and my batteries keep dying. Um, if someone can let me know, the Enduro batteries for GoPro, are they worth buying? It's it's floating around freezing temperatures right now and my batteries, they don't last more than 15-20 minutes. Half the time if I leave them out off for five minutes, I go to turn them on later. They turn on and then I hear ding 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 in the corner and, and my camera's off and I, I miss recording. So unfortunately I've missed a ton because of that. Um, doing this so if anyone can let me know if they're worth buying maybe I'll throw together a quick video just in this just to give you an update or something let you know why I haven't been posting I think it's been like a month or a month and a half since I put a video out I've just been working non-stop on this there's been so much work go into it yeah instead of sitting here talking to the camera and letting batteries die and stuff let me know about those enduro batteries if they're worth it or I've got Telesyn batteries, they seem to be doing a lot better than my GoPro batteries, but they still die pretty quick when it gets cold, so let me know if there's a trick. I'm gonna skin logs. I'll uh, see you the next step. I just wanted to show you guys a thing real quick here. Um, I got this idea from YouTube, of course. It's just a motorcycle scissor lift that I've uh, stuck in here. Everything's, everything's loose, but this allows you to lift the front of the log and apparently quite quickly that's cool so that you can get a nice even first cut so that's just that's just literally sitting on a two by four and this is a pretty hefty log so now i can get a much nicer first cut out of this log and i will not waste anywhere near as much Who doesn't love 8 inch material? Look at that, 8 by 8. Woohoo! That little trick at the end there made it so much easier to get what I wanted. I've got... I've got the core right in the middle, just about on both ends. It's. It's as perfect of an 8x8 as I'm going to be able to get. If I was making 2x8s, this would be a perfect cant for that. But I'm not. And I'm also very happy with this. So, on to the next log. Here's the uh, rest of the milling logs. They're all, they're all pretty sizely. Look at that. Pretty awesome. Get it up there. 
I measured down the log. And at the thick end, I want to come through at about the 12 inch mark. So I've set my blade to 12 inches and we're just going to lift up the log until I can get like a one inch cut out of this end. And that gives me a nice flat spot for my camp to be. Pretty much where that is. That's awesome. It is cold today. My gravel pad is frozen solid. 